Now that we have a blank canvas and saved it to change the name, we can play a little bit with creating layers and using some of the tools like the brushes and the erasers. So what I'm going to do is come over to the layers menu, come down to the very bottom, and you'll see there's a variety of little buttons down here. The one I'm really concerned with at this point is the one that looks like a little piece of paper that has a corner turned over, dog-eared. If I click on that, it will allow me to create a new layer. The layer will automatically come in above the, the last current layer, and since the background is the only one I have available, it went right on top of that, and it's called Layer 1. Now, I'm not going to worry about it too much, but at this point it's important to bring out that you generally speaking when you're working in a file you start to get a lot of layers and changing the name to something besides layer one two three four five is usually in your best interest so i happen to know that we're going to do a little bit of playing around with brushes here so just to show you how you change the name if i double click where it says layer one it will open up or activate that name box and i could change it to something like brushes, for example. And as I work, I would like to make those layers something that is relevant to me so that if I start getting dozens of layers, they might make more sense to me. So now I have the brushes layer active. I know that because it's highlighted this kind of dusty blue. If the background layer is active, if I click on that, you'll see that one is highlighted. As you work, it's really, really important to pay attention to you know which layer you have active because that's where all of your marks or erasing or whatever it is you're doing are going to take place. So I have my brushes layer active. So then I'll come over and make sure that I have in my toolbox the brush button activated. Now in the toolbox, please take note that even though you're only seeing you know a certain amount of brushes, a little over a dozen or so, uh, not brushes, buttons rather, they have these little arrows in the lower right hand corner. What that means is that these buttons are stacked. So if I click and hold, you'll see a little flyout menu come out that says, ah, this is not just the brush tool, but underneath there's a possible pencil, a color replacement, a mixer brush, and so on. So if you can't find a particular tool that you're looking for, know that it's probably hiding underneath a different button. So for example, if I was looking for you know, a paint bucket, I couldn't find it. Well, here the gradient tool is active. If I click and hold, I see that the paint bucket is actually underneath. Okay, so I'm going to go and grab this paintbrush so we can get started. So, you know, when you first start with Photoshop, it's a good idea to just look through that toolbox and, you know, pay attention to where buttons are because you'll essentially really kind of need to memorize where those buttons are. If you're ever looking at any particular tool and you're not sure what it means, if you just hold your mouse over it for a second, a flyout will come out and tell you that it's, for example, here, the clone stamp tool. That letter or little shortcut there in parentheses, brush tool B, is the keyboard shortcut. So instead of having to come over for, to the toolbox, I could just type B on the keyboard and it would change it to that tool. So when I select a brush, what I want you to notice is that up at the top, our contextual uh, bar here changes up in this uh, ribbon. So here, where I have a 12 and a little dot, if I click here, you'll see this menu comes down. That 12 is referring to the pixels, the size of my brush, so it's relatively small. If I bring this over to the right, the number gets larger. Therefore, so does my brush. So if I hover my brush over my canvas, you'll see that that circle is now significantly larger. So I can bring it over even more. And you see it's getting bigger and bigger. The slider below that for hardness is how um, sharp or soft the edges are. So all the way to the right is as crisp as that brush can be. And then as we move to the left, it's going to be getting softer and fuzzier until finally at zero, it's almost like a spray paint can or an airbrush or something like that. It's very, very fuzzy. Okay, so I'll bring that up to 100 just so we can see. And I could even type in, you know, if I wanted to say, I definitely want my brush to be exactly 100 pixels. I can just type that in. Then I'll come over and try to make a mark. 
My mark will be whatever color I have active in this foreground down at the bottom of the screen. In my toolbox, I have two boxes here. That's the foreground color and the background color. So mine happens to be this brown right now. So if I just make a mark by clicking and dragging my mouse, I see that that mark is that foreground color. Well, let's say I don't like that mark. If I want to undo it, I can just do Control Z on the keyboard. I'll put that back. Or I can go to Edit and undo the brush tool. If I go up to Edit and say Undo, and it's the brush tool because if that's the last thing I did, you'll see Control Z is here. The keyboard shortcut for Undo is very, very handy. Control Z. If I want to change that color, I can come down to the foreground color and click on it once and the foreground color brings up the color picker. Within the color picker, I can come in and choose maybe a different color. I'll get into the color picker a little bit more later, but just know that you can slide this around and change the hue here, and then its saturation, its lightness, its darkness in this larger box. So maybe I'll pick something like a blue. I'll say, okay. Notice that now I have that blue active in my foreground color, and if I make a mark, it's now that color. Now let's say I wanted to get rid of these two marks. If I do Control Z, I can step back one, one mark. But if I do it again, you'll see that that mark just reappears. So Control Z lets you undo and then redo just that one step. If I want to go back multiple steps, I do Control Alt Z. Up at the top of the screen under Edit, that's called stepping backward. You'll see it's Alt Control Z. I should take note that this is obviously on a PC. If you're on a Mac, you would have the command key, so it would be just slightly different. Let's say I wanted to undo those because I really wanted those lines to be straight. Well, if you're trying to do straight lines and you're working with a mouse, for example, like I am right now, you can try really hard to make a straight line, but it's, it's very difficult. Photoshop has a few tricks for you. If you click your mouse and hold the Shift key, you can only make horizontal or vertical lines. Okay, that's using the shift key. So click with your mouse and hold down shift and you can only do horizontal or vertical. And once you choose the direction, while I still have the mouse button to press, I can't change it. Okay, so that's using shift with the mouse button. Now what if you want to make a diagonal line? What we do is click our first point that we're interested in so I click and let go. So I basically just made a dot. If you just click quickly, you make a dot. Then I can hold down the shift key and then pick the second point where I want the line to end. Photoshop then draws a line right in between for me. So once again, that's click where you want the line to start, let go, hold down the shift key, and then click where you want the line to end and then let go of the shift key, let go of your mouse. Now notice, if I click, hold down the shift key, click again, I can do this in a chain. If I don't let go of shift, I can just start kind of connecting the dots. It's important to point this out because sometimes what happens is you'll forget to let go of the shift key and you'll go to draw some straight lines and you'll connect a weird one in between and that's why that's happening. So it's definitely worth doing a little bit of practice doing straight lines and diagonal lines.